Well, for those who believe that equality for gay Americans is the civil rights struggle of our time, this was a day on par with the Emancipation Proclamation and women marching to the polls for the first time. Of course, there are still plenty who disagree with the Supreme Court's decision to overturn the Defense of Marriage Act, and the proof was really at the state level. Despite the rulings, almost two-thirds of same-sex couples still live in places where they cannot legally wed. So what happened today, and where does America go from here? Here is my Nightline co-anchor and our man at SCOTUS, Terry Moran. It was gay day at the Supreme Court this morning with repercussions rippling across the nation. The justices struck down the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, and sent California's Proposition 8, which banned same-sex marriage, back to a lower court, basically legalizing gay marriage in America's most populous state. For the couples who challenged the California law, it was a day of triumph and long pent up emotion. Today is a good day. It's the day I finally get to look at the man that I love and finally say, will you please marry me? <laughs> so you just got engaged over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we got engaged a long time ago, but that was our, that was a nice public proposal. And uh, I, I, I realized I never said yes on the microphone, so yes. it is a yes. Yes. So you're on the record. Now. We're on the record saying yes. Word of the decision spread so quickly that President Obama spoke to the other California couple on his way to Africa, a moment captured on live television. Well, we're proud of you guys. You've talked to the president today already. We did. We talked to the president. He called from Air Force One to congratulate all of us. Hmm. What was that like? I, I, I have to say I, I was a little shaky at that moment, um, hearing his voice and then picturing him on the day of the State of the Union and in his inaugural speech where he likened our cause to that of Selma and Seneca Falls and feeling like he recognized that this battle is a good battle for the whole country and that he wants to be on the winning side. And he is, and he is, and I, we all are. How justice was a battle and how justice was denied. David Great Boys game. represented these plaintiffs in the Prop 8 case. Did you have fun with this case? Yes. I think that makes it easier. Uh, particularly now. It's been the most rewarding case that I or my colleague Ted Olson have ever been involved in. Really? What? Because it has affected people's lives uh, in fundamental ways and because it has brought this society closer to the ideals of equality. While the Prop 8 case affects millions in California, the other case decided today overturning the Defense of Marriage Act is far more sweeping and it shows dramatically how much this country has changed in the last 17 years. DOMA was passed in 1996, and it defined marriage under federal law as the union of one man, one woman, thus denying legally married gay couples equal treatment under federal law. The Senate debate was filled with dire predictions and fear. To force upon our communities the legal recognition of same-sex marriage would be social engineering beyond anything in the American experience. What took thousands of years to build is being dismantled in a generation. But in just the last eight months, six states have recognized gay marriages, and politicians who once opposed it are now supporting marriage equality. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Today, the court struck down DOMA 5 to 4, led by Justice Anthony Kennedy, who declared in ringing terms that the law is unconstitutional because it demeans the couple, humiliates tens of thousands of children now being raised by gay couples, and serves no legitimate purpose and violates the Constitution's guarantee of equality. But Kennedy's grand opinion drew a blistering dissent from Justice Antonin Scalia, who called today's ruling jaw-dropping and accused Kennedy and the liberal justices of declaring anyone opposed to same-sex marriage an enemy of human decency. I could not put down my sword when justice was my right. Make them hear you. But for Edie Windsor, the 84-year-old plaintiff in the DOMA case, what mattered was that she won 
and she wept when she heard the news this morning. Her case arose from the love of her life, Thea Spire. They spent 44 years together in New York City, finally got married in 2007 in Canada. But then after Thea died in 2009, Edie, who lives on a fixed income, was suddenly hit with $363,000 in estate taxes, taxes no straight widow would have to pay. She sued the federal government for discrimination. I spoke to her soon after the court agreed to hear her case. It's a marriage that anybody would want, okay, gay or straight. We had a wonderful life together. Today, my colleague Diane Sawyer spoke to her after the ruling came down. When you heard the news, yeah. what did you do? Cried, first thing, okay. And the room was full of people, uh, so there was both screaming and crying at the same time. Uh, I heard you say of yourself, this old lady flourished. Yeah, the support of the community was amazing. Uh, the, uh, what happened is I think youngsters who had, had had no idea of what the possible effects of, the, of that law would be, in fact, okay, suddenly understood it and said, oh, wow, she's going to make it better, <laughs> okay. And they, all, they treated me like, you know, some wonderful thing. For hours after the ruling, the Supreme Court was a scene of jubilation. The internet almost exploded with the news. Google sported the gay rainbow symbol when you typed in certain searches. Early tweets couldn't suppress the excitement. From Leonardo DiCaprio, historic day, well done SCOTUS. Ben Affleck, big news from the Supreme Court, goodbye DOMA, Prop 8, hello equality. Perez Hilton, keep calm and marry on. Lena Dunham, don't want to traffic in stereotypes, but let's be real, I'm going to love a gay wedding. In San Francisco, the celebration started early in the morning, and the emotions were overwhelming. ABC Cecilia Vega talked to a couple who had just proposed when the word came down. Exciting day? A very exciting day. A great day for democracy, a great day for marriage equality. To be in the sea of people for whom it matters so much, it's very exciting, it's very... It's emotional. It's, it's emotional. very happy. But for millions of Americans who oppose gay marriage and cherish traditional marriage, today was a dark day. It's a sad day when unelected judges uh, change the definition of marriage and, and, and turn their backs on uh, the will of voters. Across the country, there was the sense that something big had happened, a shift in the meaning of American equality. That old bedrock principle today extended once again renewed. When you get prohibited from that, when you're denied the right to even consider it, the damage from that swells up. And that's what leads to doubting yourself. And you feel, does my country or my state really want to sanction discrimination against me just because of the person that I love? We're like everybody else. We hope that everyone finds the person that they want to marry and has the right to do that because that's what our country is about. When they For Nightline, I'm Terry Moran in Washington.